Welcome to Thrifty Garage. My name is Carson, and in today's video, we'll be doing a review on the Waysafe Hitch. Uh, in addition to the review, I'll be talking about why I chose the Waysafe Hitch, and what it benefits me, why I needed a draw pitch, and why I'd want to know my tongue weight. Um, this is really a hitch that's revolutionizing the market. Uh, there's nothing else out there like it. Um, so it's really pretty cool. Uh, it's really cool digging into this and seeing how it works, and I'm excited to share that with you as well. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, first let's get in to see how this works. So here is where all the magic happens. Um, one thing I really like about this is the shape. It's kind of an odd, unique shape. Most uh, manufacturers kind of just make everything smooth, um, but they've actually taken the time to form in a handhold, which uh, makes this really easy to, to hold and move. On the side here, we've got a scale. And you can see it goes from 0 to 1,500 pounds, and then we've got the, the weight limit has exceeded here. And the reason this weight limit has exceeded is because this uh, setup is designed for a 2 and 5 sixteenths inch ball uh, with a 10,000 pound capacity. So this setup is, is set up for um, a 10,000 pound capacity, and your trailer tongue weight should be 10 to 15%. 15% of 10,000 is 1,500 pounds. So there are step-up versions. Uh, this is a little bit light duty for me, um, but I wanted to go with the aluminum. Uh, the aluminum is a lightweight hitch, so for day-to-day -day use, towing the enclosed trailer, this is perfect. So on the bottom here, we've got this little um, knob thing where this this ball will sit on top. You can see on the bottom here where it's been riding. Um, this has not been used yet, but that's just in packaging and stuff. That's where it's sat. So that, that ball sits right on there. We've got a little weep hole on the bottom. Uh, for water to go out, and then we've got a pinhole as well. So this pin will go through here and hold the ball in place. And you can see here in the ball we've got a slot. That slot will allow for up and down motion movement uh, within that space in, or in order to allow the scale to work. So what, what basically what that does is it pushes down on the scale and then it will pop out a reading. So you got some machining in there and, and some components built in there as well as we got some allen bolts here. Here's the bottom of that weep hole, and then more components. So I'm sure this can be recalibrated at the factory. Um, so there's kind of the, the gist on how this works. We can put our ball in place, put our pin in, and you can see that fits nice and flush inside there. Now we've got the slider portion. So this can be either a drop hitch or a raise hitch, depending on how you configure it. One thing that really impressed me on the website was their dimensions. Um, you go onto their spec sheets and you can see every single dimension from these back to here. So if you have a tight uh, setup or configuration and, and you need a ball that's going to fit that, uh, you can go on the website and see if this is going to fit for your application without buying it and having to test it out and wasting several hundred dollars. Here's our options on the box. We got two inch, two and a half, or three inch shank, ten, eight, six, and four inch drop. So lots of different options. And there's a look at the front. So this just slides on whatever height you're going to need. Um, I went with a 4-inch drop on this. And again, I used, I used their measurements, their specifications to determine that. And it, I was between a, I was probably a 5-inch drop. Um, so I was between a 4 and 6-inch. And I, I just don't want the extra amount hanging down. So I'd rather it be too close than too far. So this pin now goes in here. We've got a, a lock on this. You can see how this works. Turn the key, that pulls in, and that allows it to slide back out. Pop this out. And one nice thing I like about this is it's spring-loaded. So I don't have to have the key in here. I simply slide this in. Make sure it's locked, and we're good to go. And then I only need to unlock that if I am going to change it or move it. Additionally, they've got this rubber boot. Um, not sure how well this is going to hold up. Um, but working in salt uh, with snow removal, it is good to have the extra protection and just the dirt and grime of everyday construction. It's good to have that cover, so hopefully it lasts and stays on. So one thing when you invest into a hitch like this, I just did a review on my, my Kurt hitch, and maybe we'll do a comparison video of this, but it, it's just a standard hitch, really simple. Uh, it's a two inch drop, and that's all it does. And it's like 50, 60 bucks. You know, it's a lot of money, but it's not a ton. These are about $300. 
foot. And so when you get into that range, you really want to be locking your stuff up. Um, I've seen a lot of these locks that are really crummy and rust and corrode. This one seems pretty good. We'll see how it turns out um, to last the test of time. We do have an O-ring here that's supposed to keep water and stuff out. Um, but unlike this lock, this lock does need to have the key to install it. Um, so you put that in, lock it, and you're good to go. So a little bit extra work if you end up changing the balls, um, but you can change the ball with the setup. Some setups like this, you cannot change the ball. So in order to change the ball, you obviously have to remove this um, from the drop hitch portion, and then you have, so you pull this pin, and then you pull the internal pin, and then switch this one out. Um, if you grease your balls like me, like you should, um, that's kind of a messy process, and they're gonna be covered in grease, um, but it's part of working in this industry. So there's a quick look at the hitch. And now let's go into why I went with this hitch. Like I said, I had a two inch drop hitch, so why would I need a four inch now? Well, I've added bigger tires on the truck. Um, I did a little bit of, uh, I put some tipper and bump stops on there that raised the height of the truck a tiny bit, as well as I cranked the torsion keys uh, three turns uh, in order to, to get the extra height out of the front of the truck for the plow. The tires are still slightly rubbing when the plow is connected, the extra weight on the front end of the truck is causing the suspension to settle more. And, and move down. The reason I wanted to go higher and, and added all those components, I gained about two inches of height in the front of the truck and probably an inch and a half in the rear. The reason I wanted to do that is because with the plow brackets, they are super low to the ground and I needed to get them higher up. Uh, in doing so, I affected the trailer. So now my trailer tongue is much higher on that two inch drop ball, so I needed to drop it. Furthermore, I have no way of measuring my tongue weight. Uh, with any truck, you've got a payload capacity, and your tongue weight is going to be very similar to your payload capacity. So you want to be mindful and careful that not only are you um, not putting too much of the trailer weight on the front, um, but also you don't want too much weight on the rear suspension of the truck because that can have negative connotations. So this will allow me to see what my actual weight is. Even if I end up needing a, a larger drop and I have to use a different hitch, I can always put this hitch on and get pretty close to seeing what the actual tongue weight is on that specific trailer, on any trailer for that matter, up to 1,500 pounds. A little bit of an infomercial on the back here. Um, too little tongue weight, too much tongue weight, you know, equals issues. And, and I, I personally can attest to this. Um, that's, a di that's a different story for a different day. Maybe we'll have to tell that. Um, but I have had this experience where too little or too much tongue weight um, almost led to an accident. So maybe I'll have to do a future video on that. So the way I look at this, this is a, a two-in-one tool. There are tools that can measure tongue weight, uh, but this is a tool that will not only measure tongue weight, but it also allows me to tow with it as well. Um, like I said, 10,000 pound capacity. If you need more, Waysafe does have bigger uh, capacity hitches, but they you basically move into their steel um, versions of this, which are gonna weigh a lot more. Um, this is the biggest I could go on an aluminum with a two inch shank. If you've got a two and a half inch shank like the newer Chevy trucks do, a lot of the newer full size trucks have two and a half inch or even three inch uh, hitches on them, you can get a bigger shank and a higher capacity in the aluminum, I believe with Waysafe as well. So lots of different options. Here's a look at those ratings. We've got 21,000 pound max with their three inch shank. We got 14.5 with their two and a half inch shank. And we've got 10,000 pounds max with their two inch shank. Um, obviously 15%. Um, max tongue weight on all of those. Another option they do have is a 180 degree hitch and they basically have a ball on each end that you can then flip over. I don't believe they have that with a scale in the middle, but that's just, you know, traditional 180 degree hitch. A lot of companies have that. Um, Waysafe does offer that as well. Uh, the reason I didn't go for that, if you've seen my railroad track video, I took out the trailer jack on my trailer, going over some railroad tracks because it hung down too far and having a ball that's hanging down that much further is just something I don't want to have. I've got a long bed truck and the distance between the rear wheels and the middle is further than the most trucks and so that low point becomes even lower if I go into a dip and it's just not worth having extra things hanging down. Same reason I didn't go with a deeper hitch. Some people will just want to overcompensate and say, hey, I only really need a, a four inch drop now but maybe I want a six or an eight inch in the future. So they go with a, a much taller drop and then they end up dragging this everywhere and it causes issues. Um, so it's just something I wanted to have as tight of a clearance as possible because it's just gonna make everything more streamless going down the road. 
Links for watching this video on the way safe hitch. I'm excited to put it to use. I'll be sure and do some future videos on this. If you're interested in those, be sure and subscribe to the channel, as well as I've got other content that's very similar. Um, anyways, thanks for watching Thrifty Garage. Please like, comment, and subscribe. So without further ado, we'll uh, close this video. Further ado. Yeah, anyways, let's see you later. Bye.